Okay, actually, this is a good place to start. So, this safe state, or where I am right now, is right before the Sonya War Battle. This is a uh, save from any percent, like from my routing, and it should be completely accurate to anyone, to like anyone's run that follows my route and does does it on the PST. So you might notice here in the spreadsheet that our tape, film, doc, whatever you want to call it, that there's a lot of battles equipped up for. That's because we'll be equipping Champion's Room. So the only with our party that we pick and Champion's Room will only be able to get groups of four. And our goal is to get through Shasta Zoraide, doing as few battles as possible. We don't want to kill anything, if possible. And anything that we do find, we want to be able to run from. We never want to bribe, because money is really important at any percent. And... Yeah, I think that's a decent summary. Just as few battles as possible, and kill as few as possible. So the problem with uh, the Sonya War battle is there's a... I'd say about 32 possible... At most, 32 possible variations of RNG that the battle can start on, on PSTV. And you won't know which one you're on until... Well, before you couldn't know which one you were on, so you just suffered, and there was no manip. But now we actually have a decent way of figuring out which manip we're on. So, let's start the battle. I'm not gonna speed anything up here. And I'll probably slow down a few times, and a speedrun you would probably want to do this a little bit quicker, but... This is for the sake of tutorial. I really should have stopped my recording, so I could have had that separate. I'm probably just gonna have to go and edit it now, or clip it on Twitch as a highlight. Anyway, standard attack, smash axe, blah blah blah. So first turn, you will always drag an attack every time. One more thing I should explain about Sonya. So Sonya has five possible actions that she does. Generally, each war battle has like a set of actions they can do. It's like a table. Sonya has five. She has magic. She has two charges, two regular charges. She has one Sonya's charge, and she has bow attack. And the way that war battles work, they will not repeat the action until they go through all, like the, all of the possible actions. So Sonya will never repeat an action until the sixth turn of the fight. And just, I think this is non-version exclusive. Sonya's first action in every war battle will always be magic. I'm pretty sure this is not PSD exclusive, but I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure this is for all versions of Suikata. So, first turn, we, we're always safe to Dragon Knight, and generally magic is the worst thing to fight anyway. Because the fastest thing to do is magic, and slowest thing to do is to bow, which is the counter to magic. And if you magic and magic, it's like a coin flip on who wins. So, having her magic first turn, and us having Dragon Knight first turn, is really good for us. We don't have to deal with her magic, and we know we're safe to do it right. Okay, so turn two. This is where it's spicy. So like I said, at this point, we could be on 32 different variations of RNG, and we have no idea of which one we're on. And that was the whole problem in figuring out like how to manip Sonya. We have no idea which one we're on. So once again, I mentioned she had five actions, and first turn she did magic. She always does magic. So now she has three actions left. So needs charge, 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 and bow. And the cool thing about that is that if we do charge, we don't lose to any of those. So we're gonna charge, second turn. Every single time we're gonna do this. She did Sonya's charge, so now we can start looking through our table, and there's a bunch of Sonya's charges here. And we're gonna look at how many units we are. Oh no, do this so it doesn't go away. This fades away after two seconds, even if I don't press X. So what we're looking for is the top number in the units lost. That's how many units we lost. I'll show that off again in a second. That's going to match up to this column. And generally that's enough. But if there is a spot where it repeats itself, like, um, actually neither of these are. These are different strats. And I'll go over that too. But, um, so if by chance there is somewhere where it repeats itself, like right here, this one repeats itself, we could also look at how many units she lost to confirm. But we'll generally only need this column. So let's look at the game again. We lost 2922 two, and she lost 26833. Three. So 2922. Two, two. Perfect. It's one of two. This is actually one of the most common ones. 0x47. So now, once we've done uh, that, we figure out which RNG we're on. We're on this one right here. We It's a matter of just following instructions. So for this strategy, it's going to be charge, strategy, Sparkus, and magic. And for this one, it's magic, uh, charge, with Varkus and Magic. I am gonna do this one because it's a little bit faster. I don't have it in my notes here, but if we go further down, I'll go down my bookmark. 
It doesn't say here either, but a strategist battle is generally faster because it doesn't do a battle. The only good thing about doing a non-strategist battle is that if we do that battle, it might give us enough money to reach a certain threshold that's good for Regminster. But generally, if you're like you're, you're not really confident with how much money you have and like what you need to do with that, you want to do the strategist strat because if it wasn't faster, it would not be in here since the strategist strats are generally slower since they do a strategist. So we're gonna follow this strat right here. If Sonya's charge, charge, or charge, go. First turn we just charge with a default. It's always default unless it says otherwise. So this turn we charge. It'd be hilarious if I'm just wrong. I haven't done this in a while. Alright, then we strategist and charge with Varkas. So that's Varkas 3 down after we get this set up. 1, 2, 3. And then last turn we're gonna magic. In terms of like war battle speed, this is fairly bad. And like these setups are just like they're the best I can come up with. There is a lot of different options based off war battle and how you handle the dungeon. These are the best ones that I've found. There might be something better. And they're not all equal. Some are faster than others, it's just a matter of luck which one is better. Oh yeah, there we go. War battle's done. We did it in five turns. There was no risk involved at all because there was never a chance of us getting hit by a bow, since we knew what RNG we were on. That's the beauty of this. Since we do that charge in the second turn, we can find what RNG we're on right away, and we can adjust uh, our strategy right away, so we'll know when she does bow and we can make sure not to use magic there. So now we're doing this strat, so all I do is I go on my Google Doc, I click on this bookmark, and we jump to the bookmark ID, and we follow the instructions here. Also, by default, you're always adding the same people. I actually forgot who they were, so I'm gonna look here. A bit rusty. Haven't ran this in a while. Hey, no, I get cube. Alright, so it's Cleo, Hit, Spook, Kazim. And I'll explain why I add these specific people. Cleo is the most important because she has a champion's rune. Then we add Hicks. Hicks we add, I think, because it's on the same page as Luke. Yeah, and that's a big part of it. We generally want to add at least one mage in case we do have to do a battle. If not, we could have probably found something better. But the reason we pick Hicks is because it's along the way to Luke, so it doesn't cost us any extra time menuing, and it's a high level. We want to be above a certain level threshold. We add Luke. He's also high level and is a mage with an earth rune, so he can clear all the fights in here fairly easily. And then we add Kasim. 3-1, I missed him. He's on the, right here, first one on the third page. That's why we add him. We'd also add, like, Milia. She's one level higher, but as you can see, it's a bit more menuing to get to her. That's why we added these people. I don't remember the exact level threshold. The total sum of your levels is supposed to be, I think, 250 or more. I could be wrong. I would have to check again. Anyway, back to what we were doing. We're going to go back to this table for the setup we're doing. And now we just follow the instructions. These are the battles that we're going to get, and we're just going to run through and do what the table tells us to do. So, for this one, it's run, 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 basically. And we, in any person, we always pick up Master Guard now, unless it says otherwise. My table might say to pick it up, like, on the way up or on the way back. It's to optimize the step calendar because of, like, when you get battles and when you get when you do the Shell Venus fight. But if it doesn't say anything, I think you can pick it up on either way. And it doesn't matter at all. Bribe. Have to think about it for a second. Boss battles we always bribe, that's standard. Right? Anyway that runs any percent should already know this, that's why it's not included in my notes. These notes are generally pretty concise. Or this table at least. So you don't have to worry about that. The money route's set up so you always have enough money to bribe shell. It's about twenty thousand or so. We're now in the third battle on the table. Three sirens right here. Now we just keep on going. Running through. Fourth battle, we're on the fourth soldier fight now. And the fifth one says, Four sirens never see this. And this basically means that unless you did something horrible with your movement, you should not get this battle. But if I did, this one's a run anyway, seriously. And that's Sonya Minute. 